All right, everybody, welcome. Today's episode, Vegans versus 911. I gotta tell you, I love my vegan friends, but if we're gonna call ourselves a vegan, we gotta be pro-life. Human life before animal lives. So if you're pro-life and you're a vegan, we can talk, but this channel's not about ethical issues. It's about what's better for the human body. Let's discuss that 911 style. So first, a shout out to all my vegan friends and a sincere heartfelt thank you to the vegan movement. So here's a list of doctors that I listen to and respect and also a list of documentaries that I've watched and also recommend. That being said, it doesn't mean I agree with everything. These are what I feel are the legitimate arguments for the vegans. One, is it healthier to not eat meat or any animal products including eggs and dairy? Uh, number two, the raising and treatment of animals to be used as food and the impact on the environment. The next, the next argument is what I reject. It's the argument that somehow suggests that vegans are morally and ethically superior because they choose not to eat animal products. That somehow they are woke or awake or whatever word they wanna use uh, to make them morally superior to those who don't eat animal products. So that's the argument where I countered with the abortion issue. If you're not willing to kill animals but you're willing to kill the unborn baby, how woke are you really? Some people would say that's got nothing to do with the issue. I say, yes, killing is killing. If you're going to make killing the issue. So here's an example of that type of attitude. Kip Anderson, who's the co-producer of What the Health, uh, a documentary I highly recommend and his other documentary, uh, Cowspiracy, which I also like. Now, it doesn't mean I agree with everything in the documentary. I don't have to agree with everything to like it. And it's very good, and it is. So here Kip Anderson is debating the author of The Bulletproof Diet. So near the end of the debate, Kip Anderson starts talking about how the author says that he hacks his body. And Kip counters with, instead of hacking, you should work in harmony with. Well, so far, so good. But then he throws in that bulletproof and bullets and says, well, that's something that sounds like something Trump would say. And I just think that's a cheap way to try and score some points, but it shows that type of attitude that somehow you're superior to those who eat meat when you're a vegan. So moving on, because this channel is about health and fitness, let's tackle the issue of whether or not you should be 100% plant-based or not. That technically still doesn't make you a vegan because vegans won't use leather products or honey or anything that disturbs or harms the animal. But still we have the question, should we be 100% plant-based or not. Now, one of the most respected doctors in the movement, Dr. T. Colin Campbell, the author of the China study, in the documentary Food Choices, I think he gives us one of the most honest answers to this question. He also gives us a clear path to follow. In case I have to remove the clip, this is what he says. I can't say, and I don't think science can say, that everybody has to be 100%, you know, all the time. I can argue the case, I think, for the vast majority of people, we are to be at least 90%, probably 95%. We've got good science for that. In many cases, if people already have a disease, it's a good idea they should be 100% all the time. Now remember, this is coming from one of the most respected vegan doctors, a leader in this field. In that same documentary, Dr. Pam Popper, talked about that it's the dose that's important, referring to me and talking about the Chinese. And she says the Chinese would eat very little, but they were still eating meat. Dr. Joe Kahn, when he was reviewing the debate that he had on the Joe Rogan show with Chris Kresser, was being interviewed by Plant Based News, started talking about a tick that you get bit from that makes you allergic to meat and that it was a terrible year to be a butcher. Now, I think it's those kind of statements that are a little bit over the top especially when you're an expert and leader in the field. It just, again, kind of demonstrates that type of attitude that's underlying. Uh, because I've run on life-threatening emergencies due to a plant-based allergy, peanuts. That doesn't mean that it's a bad year for those who sell peanuts. You also have the podcast with Rick Roll, when he had Dr. Longo on the show, who is the leading expert on longevity. And even Dr. Longo pushed back when he was talking about protein absorption when you get older and how he recommends animal products 
for the general population, although he agrees with a plant-based whole food diet. My other issue with the vegan community is the acceptance of these processed foods. I thought the whole idea was to be whole foods, plant-based, but now we have all these fake meats, fake cheese, and a myriad of other products that are just as highly processed. Just because something is plant-based doesn't make it healthy. Now, if you're gonna eat junk food, I'd rather it be organic, plant-based, vegan, with no added salt and no added sugar, but at the end of the day, it's not what your body wants. Your body wants whole foods. Here at 911 Health and Fitness, we promote a 90% organic, whole food, plant-based, and up to 10% organic, whole food, animal-based. Grass-fed and finished, pasture-raised, or wild-caught where appropriate. Now, from that, we're allowed to get up to 20% of our calories from processed foods. And again, we want those to follow the same guidelines, plant-based, organic, vegan, no added salt or sugar, or at least as close to that as possible. In my own personal life, I did about one year, 99% whole foods, plant-based. And I personally felt something was missing. And at the end, I started to introduce or reintroduce meat little by little back into my diet. In the beginning of that 99% plant-based whole foods diet, it was great. I felt awesome, but over time I started to feel weaker and I didn't like that feeling. If you're overweight, then going 100% plant-based can be a good idea for you. But once you reach your target BMI, it becomes a little bit more difficult to not become underweight. I'm six foot one, 164 pounds. My BMI is 21.6 and I'm right in the middle, technically in the perfect range. But it's hard for me to maintain this weight without eating some meat and I plow down a ton of food, you can check out my Instagram at henryorth911. I'm a firefighter and having to perform at a high level at a moment's notice, I just felt again that something was missing. It's only when I eat processed food or junk food that it's easy for me to put on some weight, but again, that weight, I call it garbage weight. Now I know I can add supplements, proteins, and shakes, but I'm kind of against that unless absolutely necessary. I think the body responds best to when you feed it whole foods. So hopefully we can hug and all get along even though we don't agree 100%. I think for all of us who are on this journey of health and fitness, we realize that there's so much debate on a lot of these issues and that we should all keep an open mind. So don't forget to subscribe and like and to leave your comments below. And until we meet again, stay safe and stay healthy. <laughs>